Welcome to this Haiku screencast and in this screencast I want to show you the brand new version of Haiku the Alpha 4 of release 1. You can get more information and the download for the Alpha 4 version that I will show you here on the haiku-os.org website and here you get also a listing of the cool new features and I want to show you some of them so let's switch to another desktop and yeah the first thing that I want to show you is basically that Haiku has gained a better multimedia support in the media player so let's open up a video and I will show you that there is um, the option now to just um, to just set various different tracks, video tracks and subtitles. So if you have a video with subtitles you can set it here. You can skip of course through the video as you can see here. Don't want to show too much otherwise YouTube will block my video. So uh, let's hit pause in here. You can set a different audio language. So if you have a um, video file MKV for, for example with different audio tracks or with different subtitles you can set them here. And you have now a new setting under the settings menu which allows you to set the medium uh, the, e the subtitle size so it's set normally to medium or uh, the subtitle placement bottom of the video or top of the video just like you want it to have. So this is the media player and when I'm running the media player I can show you there's a new 10 band equalizer built into Haiku. So let me open up the Cortex application to show you how this will work. So here's Cortex and as you can see here now I have the media player connected to my audio mixer and under media add-ons I now have the 10 band equalizer and I can just drag and drop it in here. And yeah, what I can now do is connect simply the outputs into the equalizer and then the output of the equalizer to the output uh, of my sound card. Just so just replacing the audio mix and that is running in here. And yeah, I uh, can tweak the parameters. As you can see, I have a 10 band equalizer. I can uh, set various different uh, things in here. I have themes uh, that I can set. I want to um, and I can start the control panel if, if I have any problems or something like this. So the only thing that's missing is really um, yeah, yeah pre-samples or something like this. We can uh, have presets of various different settings of your 10-band equalizer. So this is I think the only thing still missing in the 10-band equalizer but it's very cool that it's built into the system so that you can uh, in yeah in every possible way tweak every sound output that's coming fr through a system uh, via this 10-band uh, equalizer software. So this is pretty pretty nice and by the way Cortex is a very very good and pretty pretty advanced uh, audio tweaking tool under Haiku. So this is about everything in multimedia. Uh, let's talk about network. So Haiku Alpha 4 has gained VPA support. So it was, I think, shortly after uh, the Alpha 3 was released, there was uh, work on the VPA support, and now it's fully completed. And you can connect to VPA networks uh, just by right clicking in here. And normally, you will get all um, the listing of all the available networks. You can just click on them, and it will ask for your password, and you can just type it in, and it should connect. So it might work on your old netbook as well. Uh, I did not find any uh, computer right now that I currently possess that does not work. So uh, it's pretty nice and pretty handy feature so that you can connect everywhere you want. Another nice feature, they changed a little bit the uh, menu. So if you have uh, Alpha 3 still running, you will see that in Alpha 4 they changed a little bit uh, in the menu. So first of all, there's a mount entry so that you can mount um, yeah, partitions basically or different USB sticks or something like this from the menu and unmount them of course. And the uh, yeah, deskback preferences have uh, been I think uh, uh, they, they gave it a new name here so it's now called deskback preferences and you only have the, the basic preferences you don't have a separate preference for uh, setting um, time, date and localization for the deskbar. Uh, 
Uh, what you can do is if you want to switch the language, go to preferences and go to the locale tool, which now supports almost everything. So you can see on the left, I have a list of languages and you can see that it's, oops, it's a very long list of languages, various different languages and some, at least they look broken, <laughs> some symbols in here. Uh, but it's an alpha 4. So you can gen then just drop, uh, drag and drop a language, just like for example here, uh, Brezo or Nick, right in here, and uh, then uh, it will be on the preferred languages and the applications will change if the language pack is installed and so on. But we can o what you can also do is set the uh, formatting. So you can set the formatting to a different layout, just like for example I've set mine to uh, German in here because I'm uh, in Germany. So we have a 24 hour clock and a 2 hour, uh, 12 hour clock. Uh, we have a different uh, time and date format and so on and you can set them here just like you want it to have. So this is pretty nice and um, one centralized way to set the localization. Uh, pretty handy, pretty good. So what's in the settings? Um, Next, it's a uh, key map switcher. You have, first of all, the key map tool, which looks like this. I think they treat here a little bit also. So they can um, set different key map layouts and so on. You have the option to set Apple key maps. You can see uh, there's an Apple aluminum uh, key map um, thingy that you can switch on here and some ThinkPad specific uh, switches that you can uh, just simply turn on here which is pretty nice um, you have some font options so again different fonts in here uh, if you want to switch the font and you can save key maps and modifier keys set modifier keys just go to set modifier keys and you can then uh, just simply switch keys very important uh, very important for Mac users for example where sometimes it's important to switch some keys so that uh, it'll work a little bit better or it is a bit, little, bit, little bit more convenient uh, just like on the Mac or something like this. So you have the same setting or you can set the same settings just like on the Mac for the Alt key, for the Option key and so on. So pretty nice, pretty good uh, key map switching tool. There's a new key map switcher also available. If you go into preferences, you can see the key map switcher, which allows you to set uh, various different key maps and you can see multiple key maps for example you can see the various different key maps that are available and you can then just choose a hotkey uh, which allows you to switch um, the keyboard layout you can activate shortcuts substitution if you want to and you can use a separate key map in each application that you start so if you have your for example, uh, your normal web browser opened up and you want to write in uh, what, what's a strange language or an inconvenient language, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Arabic or something like this. If you want to write them uh, in, in that, for example, Facebook or Google Plus or something like this, you can do this. And if you switch to the your programming editor, it will automatically switch to the English US, um, English US uh, keyboard layout so the international uh, keyboard uh, layout and you can install uh, this switcher in the desk bar this will look like this and it will show you the actual key map that it's currently uh, having so let me quit this in here ah desk bar crashed uh, did i say that this is an alpha release so oops this was not intended So let's try to get back the desk bar. So desk bar should be under system somewhere. Um, bup, 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 there we have desk bar. Now we have our desk bar back. So the next thing that I want to show you is the web browser. So Web Positive gained a new WebKit engine, and this is this was really really necessary because not all pages just work. Just like for example Google Plus. In this case, you can see uh, Google Plus and, and a nice little comment on IQ Alpha 4 works just fine. As you can see here, there's also a uh, customized the customized scroll bar works also nice and yeah, pretty pretty nice new WebKit engine. Let me just go to the HTML5test.com page. 
What you will notice there is that there's still no um, HTML5 video support or audio support in there, so the MediaKit integration into WebKit is still missing. I hope that this will come with an, at least with the ne next uh, version of the Alpha, so Alpha 4, 5, or uh, in some way in between, <laughs> so between Alpha 4 and 5. Uh, but everything else is uh, a lot better. You can just um, uh, just compare your account on Haku Alpha 3 to this uh, now in Haku Alpha 4. And yeah, the browser works pretty much good. What What's new is that there's no uh, full screen menu or new, f it's not switching to full screen if you go, uh, if you just want to maximize the window, it just works now. So you don't have to go to full screen. You have the full screen option still available just by going to view and uh, hit full screen or alt enter. It will go to full screen. So the same old full screen mode that you might uh, expect it from the offer free. So this is the brow browser and I think I have covered almost everything. Just let me go to the cheating list in here. So what do they have? So improvement in localizations, bugs, of course, they fix bugs, uh, file system bugs, the BFS file system should now run much uh, more robust. Uh, hardware support, USB OHCI drivers, uh, improved CPU identifications. I think that is something that I can show you just by going here and starting Pulse. You can see that Pulse, ah, it's barely to see, but Pulse is now listing Core i5 and then the number 2530M, I think, and the, um, and the speed of the core. Um, yeah, the last time I started, I think in, in, in Alpha 3, it was only listing Intel Core or something like this. Uh, and yeah, this has improved. Uh, the 10 byte equalizer, I think I showed you. The improved network drivers, of course. Uh, early IPv6 support, VPA support finally, in under wireless network and VPA2 support. Um, video support, if you have a Radeon HD card, uh, there's a high possibility that your card is now supported. Uh, under the system itself, there's improved virtual memory settings and swap file creation logic, so it won't uh, have any problems like like it had before. For developers, maybe very interesting, the OpenGL kit has been upgraded to uh, 7.8.2 for GCC2 and 8.1.0 for GCC4. And yeah, this is basically everything to cover up for Haiku Alpha 4. You can start developing. There's still a package management missing as mm, only rudimentary package management available, just like the one in Alpha 3. I can show you this. Uh, install optional packages, a simple bash script that allows you to just simply uh, download some packages. Let me list you the packages that are available. You can see that uh, the packages that are installed. So you can see that there is, for example, the team Tim GM sound font, so that uh, so that you have uh, MIDI support right out of the back. Uh, you have XZ XZ compression support, VPA supplicant, uh, ICU development base, CD record is in there, so you can burn something. Uh, JSON Perl is in there. Curl is in there. SQL Lite is in the web positive bookmarks or in the bzip support, set support. And you can have some uh, advanced utilities or optional packages, just like, for example, Army Knife, Bazaar, Beam, BIA, Be Happy, BS Compatibility, Bzilla browser, so the old <laughs> Firefox uh, or relabeled Firefox 2 browser. Burn it now. Kaya, the uh, multi messengers that supports, I think, ICQ and MSN as well as IM and something like this. Uh, you can download the Clang compiler, Clockwork, uh, video editing suit. Um, has some demo packages for audio and uh, data and images as well as video and uh, Java. I think this is new. The development Java is also now possible. If you want to develop on PowerPC, you have a development environment for PowerPC. DMD code, Doxygen, Droid, Fastapp, Frisk, Git, Doc, and Mercurial, Lua, 
uh, Neo NetSurf is also there, so if you want an alternative web browser. OpenSound is there, OCaml, Paladin as the uh, IDE, Python is in there, Async, Ruby, Subversion, and Transmission, Vim also, if you don't want to code in uh, Paladin or P. And yeah, Physis FS, SDL libs are in there, and XIF libs. So if you want to develop something on Haiku or want to, want to test out new software, you can do with this install optional packages minus uh, a and then just enter the name I think of uh, I think of, of, of the package that you want so this is Haiku Alpha 4 I'm yeah pretty excited about uh, this I want to test it out and try it out on real hardware not on this virtual machine anymore and uh, yeah I will give uh, I think I will give you a feedback on this and perhaps I will do some more Haiku screencasts uh, regarding um, some of the cool features and some of the cool software that Haiku provides so if you want to start with Haiku on your ne old netbook or something like this I think this could be a perfect starting point now with Haiku Alpha 4 running pretty good pretty stable having support for VPA and VPA2 so almost every network card is now supported so that you can j then just easily access your network and yeah this is a perfect um, operating system if you want to reveal or revive your old netbook so this is everything for this screencast i hope you enjoyed this and yeah thanks for watching